Okay, so there has been a lot of breaking news this weekend in the wake of the deadly UPS crash in Kentucky, and I'm sure you already know. But the two biggest stories have to be the FAA's Emergency Airworthiness Directive, which came at the request of Boeing, and the news that both UPS and FedEx have grounded all their MD-11s until they can figure out what the hell is going on. So we'll touch on the breaking stories, and then I want to get into the deadly history of both the MD-11 and its sister ship, which is essentially the same plane, the DC-10. But the FedEx and UPS groundings are pretty much self-explanatory. Both UPS and FedEx announced late Friday that out of an abundance of caution and at the recommendation of Boeing, they will be grounding all MD-11s in their fleets until the cause of the crash can be determined. Both companies said they want to find out if there is an inherent flaw in the jet before they will fly it again. And that brings us to the FAA Airworthiness Directive number 2025-2351 sent to owners and operators of the Boeing Company model MD-11 and MD-11F airplanes. The emergency AD, of course, was prompted by the UPS crash where the left-hand engine and pylon detached from the airplane during takeoff. The cause of the detachment is currently under investigation, of course. It says this condition could result in the loss of continued safe flight and landing. Now, while this too is self-explanatory, there is some confusion as to what and exactly where the left engine separated from the aircraft. Because in the Friday press conference, if I recall correctly, the NTSB announced that while the engine did separate from the aircraft, They said at the time it did not take the pylon mount with it. And since most aircraft engines are designed to fall away from the wing at and with the pylon attached in a worst case scenario, that would have been a whole different situation. Because historically when engines have been jettisoned from an aircraft, it usually takes the pylon with it. However, apparently that wasn't the case and the pylon did in fact separate from the engine. And if you know your history, that's exactly what happened with an American Airlines DC-10 Flight 191 in Chicago in 1979, when due to improper maintenance, both the engine and the pylons separated from the aircraft, leading to the loss of 271 passengers and crew. So considering all that, the grounding of the MD-11 could potentially last a long time simply due to how long a proper investigation will take. But still, it's the right move to make for the safety of the flight crews and civilians alike. However, with that said, this recent UPS crash was quite shocking, especially to those probably younger than 40. The rest of the aviation world and those of us who witnessed many of the past tragic accidents of these aircraft, well, it wasn't that shocking in and of itself. However, what is shocking is that after all these years, when we thought they had learned from the past and worked the bugs out of the MD-11, well, apparently they didn't. Because these sister planes, the MD-11 and now the mostly retired DC-10, have had a deadly history, which has literally claimed many thousands of lives. And even though these two planes are basically the same aircraft, I'm not going to focus a lot on the DC-10, but we have to address it first. And then we'll get to the MD-11's dangerous past. However, the DC-10s and later the MD-11's reputation for danger stemmed from several early design flaws that proved catastrophic. Starting with the DC-10, it was a poorly engineered cargo door latch that allowed the door to blow open in flight on two major flights, most notably in 1974 on Turkish Airlines Flight 981, causing a rapid decompression that collapsed the cabin floor and severed control cables, killing everyone on board. Then later in 1979, as I mentioned earlier, the crash of an American Airlines Flight 191 in Chicago, a crash where an engine and pylon, much like we just saw in the UPS crash, fell off the aircraft as a result of poor maintenance. However, that crash revealed that the aircraft's systems lacked redundancy, especially to survive certain failures. When the engine and pylon separated during takeoff, it damaged all of the hydraulic and electrical lines and left the jet uncontrollable. By the way, I did a full video on the United 191 crash. If you missed it, I'll include a link down below. But just to finish on the DC-10, finally there was United Flight 232 in 1989 at Sioux City, Iowa, when its tail engine fan disintegrated, sending shrapnel through all three hydraulic systems, which were poorly designed, routing them too close together, again leaving the airplane without conventional control. Though the DC-10's safety record improved after modifications and years of service, these high-profile disasters permanently damaged public trust and the airlines eventually replaced the DC-10 with newer, more efficient aircraft that offered better redundancy, reliability, and fuel economy. And in case you weren't aware, both jets are Douglas aircraft, just the MD-11 was renamed after the 1967 merger between Douglas and McDonnell aircraft and eventually Boeing. 
Okay, so with that background information out of the way, let's talk about the MD-11. When the McDonnell Douglas MD-11 entered service in the early 1990s, it was supposed to be the future. A sleeker, more efficient evolution of the DC-10. Longer range, better fuel burn, a redefined trijet for a new era. However, to squeeze every mile of range they could from the airframe, McDonnell Douglas made a subtle but critical design choice. They shrunk the horizontal stabilizer. A smaller tail meant less drag. Less drag means better fuel burn, but because of the smaller tail, there was a center of gravity problem with the aircraft. So to balance it out, engineers shifted the airplane's center of gravity further aft. The problem? It was too far aft, right near the edge of aerodynamic stability. And on paper, well, this was considered a brilliant engineering feat. However, in reality, it produced an airplane that flew like no other airline in the sky. Oh, and... That's not a good thing either. Not at all. Until the MD-11 came along and after most DC-10s retired and went extinct, there was the original Jumbo and still is the original Jumbo, the queen of the skies, the Boeing 747. Now, while the 747 is a handful of aircraft to be sure, the majority of 747 pilots said the queen of the skies is an absolute dream to fly, often referring to the 747 as a gentle giant. Pilots describe the 747 as having relatively benign handling characteristics at low speeds and calling it surprisingly maneuverable for its size. Additionally, pilots say that the 747 has a direct and honest feel that some pilots prefer over more automated systems. And the 747 is probably most loved for its comfortable landing feel, especially for such a large aircraft. The trailing link landing gear provides a cushioned landing which helps even with less than perfect touchdowns. However, conversely, unlike the 747, MD-11 pilots quickly learned that the MD-11 did not like to be finessed. There was no wiggle room. It demanded precision, especially on landing. Because of the smaller tail, the aircraft had reduced pitch stability. The nose responded quickly, too quickly to pilot input. Kind of like the difference between a Ferrari and a squishy Cadillac. On the MD-11, a slight pull on the yoke on landing meant a larger flare. A slight push meant a greater dive, and with its high wing loading, the MD-11 came in fast, a lot faster on approach than competing airlines. At those speeds, the difference between a smooth landing and disaster could be measured in inches in a fraction of a second. The typical landing approach speed on the MD-11 depends on the load, ranging anywhere from approximately 158 to 175 knots, and can be as high as 186 knots. Yeah, that's fast. Now compare that with the 747, which has a typical landing approach speed of approximately 145 to 150 knots, which is pretty much on par with smaller Boeing 737s. So you can imagine landing in a fully cargo-loaded MD-11, well, it's definitely a white-knuckle thrill ride. As a matter of fact, the MD-11 is such a different beast from other aircraft that it requires its own specific pilot-type rating. This is in addition to the standard certifications and training required to operate any large jet aircraft. So when landing the MD-11, if the airplane touched down slightly hard, it would bounce. And once it bounced, many crews found themselves in a deadly trap because historically, many MD-11 crashes occurred on landing due to a combination of the high-speed approach and its setback landing gear. It was a recipe for disaster. So if the nose pitches up when the pilot pushes forward to correct, the MD-11 responds aggressively, resulting in the nose slamming down hard on the runway, resulting in a landing gear failure or a wing strike on the runway, causing the airplane to roll violently, resulting in many fiery and fatal crashes. And unfortunately, this pattern played out again and again. As a result, it didn't take long for passenger airlines to come to the conclusion that the juice just wasn't worth the squeeze and decided killing pilots and passengers wasn't a good business model, so they phased out the MD-11 as well as the DC-10 for passenger service. So it was just time to move on from the MD-11. However, as passenger airlines phased it out, there was one market still eager to fly it, and that was, of course, the air cargo industry. And no surprise, just looking at the size of this jumbo jet, the MD-11 could hold massive payloads across continents, oceans, and the world. Economics just made sense, so FedEx, UPS, Lufthansa, and many other international cargo operators became its final destination, so to speak, pardon the pun. And airlines drove this workhorse hard, but there was still one problem. And that was the MD-11 itself. Because while the cargo may have changed from living, breathing passengers to TVs, medical supplies, and microchips, the airplane didn't change. And she was still the fickle beast she always was. 
with the same center of gravity, the same pitch problems, the same high landing speeds, and tight margins. And the accidents continued just now with three and four man freight crews who often flew long hours at night into airports under less than ideal conditions. So the bottom line of all this is to say that the MD-11 and its sister ship, the DC-10, have really sadly earned the bad reputation they have. And both of those airplanes, and today the MD-11, well, they don't give too many second chances. And my final point is this. Today the MD-11 is nearing the end of its operational life and maybe it's time to let go of the old girl and put her out to pasture and move on to more modern twin engine models like the Boeing 777 or the Airbus A350. Or my favorite, just stick with the queen of the skies, the always dependable Boeing 747. Well, that's what I think. How about you? Please be sure and let me know down below.